Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. I know we haven't left much for Chris, so I'm going to keep those bullets inside the the lion's mouth. Uh, second floor. Down with the emblem key, huh? The albinoid description. A creature which is created by injecting T virus into the genes of a salamander. Gross. Changes as it grows with age. When young, it's, it's small in size, but it can grow to over seven feet in a very short time framework, ten hours. Holy crap. They can discharge electricity. Oh, goody. Oh, yes. Oh, happy day. Ooh. Oh, this is what we this is what we need. Look at that, I was right. One one two six. Damn, I, I got a good eye. But we need to shut off the Ventilation. All right, cool. Sweet. So now that annoying noise won't be there when we go back into the other side of the building. I, I can't remember if you kill the zombies in this area if they're if they're gone with you know if they're like not there for Chris either. But I don't know. I can't remember. All right. We no longer need that. Freed up an inventory spot. All right. All right, we're finally back here where um where that scientist died. Nothing useful, that door's a little open. that we could die here in like two seconds like uh and they freaking count they count the doors opening too and it takes up like six seconds come on game 
Get me out of here. Whew. And of course we discarded that that dang thing. Um, alright. Come on. <laughs> oh my god. Yep. Unbelievable. So if you're wondering what the hell I'm doing, I think we have to put this painting in this room to unlock something. I could be way wrong, but... There is supposed to be two paintings on this wall. Ah, the gold key. Thank goodness. I was like, where is this gold key? I could not remember. December 8th, Alfred Ashford. Yes, use a lockpick. Sweet. Ooh, let's save it for Chris. Can we? Yeah, we'll just take it. Because, you know what? I'm tired of saving stuff for Chris. Which, we haven't even been very good at doing that anyway. Um... We're going to just put everything in the inventory chest, and Chris will surely find one of those. Um, but yeah, I should I should wrap it up tonight, actually. Yeah, because these headphones, it looks like they're on their last legs. Hey, X-Force, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. You have a good night, too, man. We're not done yet. We're going to go into, like, one more room here, and uh, we'll solve whatever puzzles in this room, and then we'll... We'll head out after that. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry I can't do one more tonight. It's not I'm, it's not because I'm tired, because trust me, I'm not. But I gotta walk my dog, and then I gotta um, charge the headphone and all that stuff, so... Yeah, I have a feeling this is just a good, good ending point. We played for three hours tonight, though. That's pretty good. And we're about... I wouldn't say we're halfway through the game, but we're close. Oh, this puzzle. I forgot this puzzle. Message to the family master. Congrats on your succession as master. Paper presents you with an earthenware vase. <clears throat> as you may know, the tradition is from Veronica. Excuse me. Uh, as you may know, this tradition first began with a butler presented a golden teacup as a commem commemorative to Veronica. As founder of the Ashford family, her intelligence and beauty are legendary. The second and third masters, Stanley and his son Thomas, were also presented with similar teacups. It was their hope to achieve glory as Veronica did before them. The position of family master then shifted from Thomas to his twin brother, Sir Arthur. It then went to Sir Edward, your grandfather. That was when the Ashford family enjoyed its golden age. It was also Sir Edward's achievement that established the large chem chemical enterprise umbrella. However, when a uh, Edward passed away and your father, Alexander, succeeded the position, the glorious Ashford family gradually began to sink. I sincerely hope that the Ashford family regains its glory with your guidance, just as this face continues to shine eternally. Scott Harmon, butler of Ashford family. Um, in memory of Alexander. So Alexander has... That's completely broken. So we gotta go in the right order, but I think it's like, alright, so first is Veronica. And then there's the guy with the candlestick. That's, oh, that's our, that's our father. He's gonna be last, I think. We need a guy with a T. I think it's him, and then the twins. And that's the grandfather. Um, I think it's this guy. Yep. And then the brother with the T set. And then the brother without the T set. 
and then the old man with the vase, that's our grandfather, who created Umbrella. And there's not our grandfather, but the Ashford one. And then our the their father who brought the company to ruin and the family's name to a laughing stock. And then to you. Alright, first try. And there's Alexia. We got the frame. Yes, yeah, so we the vase, but we need something inside of it, if I remember correctly. Look at that. Sweet. Run, 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 run! Oh, two of them! Jeez! Uh, but Grifter said he's, right now, he's playing uh, the Conan Exiles game. He said it's really, really fun. And uh, that he grew up on the books, the comics, the cartoon of Conan. And like, like I said, I don't know much about Conan. I think I've just seen the one movie. Um, and that's it. Oh. Yeah, Otter Lock is not our friend right now. Hmm. Alright. We used a lot of bullets. I could have used a couple grenade rounds and killed them in one, but... I mean, I gotta save those for big bad guys. Uh, Grifter says it's a fantasy setting where all the magic is rare and evil. Oh, shoot. Um, that sounds dope. Where all magic is evil and rare. It's kind of like our world a little bit, minus the fantasy stuff. Oof, get in there. Um, yeah, feel free to tell me about Conan, dude. I'm, like I said, I'm a blank slate. I, I just know Arnold Schwarzenegger played him. <laughs> That's it. Of course, we got bit. Hmm. So we... Oh, dang it. I screwed this up. I should have went to the other side first. All the magic is tied to the gods and demons of that world. Oh, sweet. Definitely adds a level of cool. Oh, Jesus. You know what? Screw it. And we'll just use the last of our weak-ass crossbow on this guy. Wait, where is he? Where's that auto-lock? Fuck me, he's... There we go. I know we don't have to kill every zombie, but uh, I like to. Sure does make me feel better. And Conan is a Sumerian, and they pray to Krom, who is a god who made the world and now doesn't do anything for anyone, and he hates magic. <laughs> yeah. Not too unlike our world, I guess. Um, that sounds cool. It sounds like really rich with lore, though. Sumerian, so what kind of um, like race is that? I'm, I mean, I know it's like humanoid. He, he looks human, right? Um, but, uh, are they, like, do they have, like, their own planet? Is, like, um, or Sumerian just, like, the name of, like, the tribe he's part of? How do we, because don't we go through that? Like, I think we, I think that's, like, a trap door and you can push through it. I don't know why. Oh, because she, I mean, she, I guess she doesn't know it's a, it's a trap door. I know, because I've beaten the game. 
and he hates magic. Sumerian is a race. They live up in the mountains. Um, oh, okay. Sweet. Or mountain people. What does Sumerian mean? Does it have a, a like a meaning to it? Is Conan, does that have a meaning to Like, is he named after, like, something? Or does Conan mean, like, the Chosen One or anything like that? There's many different races and gods. I gotcha. I kind of figured, yeah. All right, that creepy song's playing again. Uh, so I'm having a little bit of a rough day. That's why I wanted to to um to you know play this now because I was gonna play this later tonight, but um I had a second job. I don't know if anyone saw that on my Facebook. Um, but I kind of temporarily had a second job. I was on vacation for two weeks from Lego, and I was trying to, like, get a lot of videos made. I'm starting a Patreon soon. i am just been hurting so bad, like, financially, and um, I feel bad because now I have a roommate, and I'm, like, late with bills a lot with him, and I, I feel really bad because he's a really nice guy to let me live here for a, a, a cheaper price than what I would probably normally pay to live here. And, uh... And I, for like two days, I had a second job. And then I went to Lego today to talk to them more about the scheduling and, you know, how I can schedule a day off so I could work at this other job. And then the other job was like, well, we want you more than one day. Like, and I was like, oh, I thought when you hired me, you just wanted me for one day. And they were like, oh, we would like to have you for more. You know, your interview was really well and everything. So I was flattered. And it's just one of those situations where we couldn't work it out. I mean, obviously, I'm a full time supervisor at Lego. So, um, so I couldn't really you know, offer more than, like, one day. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of slow. I'm kind of bummed about it. Um... Nah, Grifter. Unseen. Hey there! I'm listening to music at max volume, so I'm just going to be in lurk mode. Still here, though. Uh, got some writing to do. And at me if you need anyone. Glad to meet y'all, by the way. Hi, Grifter Sheen. Hey, what's up, Unseen420? Hey, thanks for being here. No, lurk away, please. What music are you... Well, you know what? I, I know you're lurking, so if you can't answer that, it's fine. I always like to know what kind of music people listen to, though. I, I picked up the new Seven Dust album recently. It came out on my birthday. I actually pre-ordered it when I got my tax money in. So when my tax money came in, I basically bought myself a couple birthday presents because I knew I would be broke when my birthday came, which was just like two weeks ago. And uh, I was right. I was dead broke on my birthday. But then I got the Seven Dust CD in, and that like really cheered me up. Uh, and I've been rocking out to that like um, here at home and, and driving around. Uh, so... Hello, Unseen. Just have why Conan has been written in some form or other since 1932, so there is tons of... Ah, oh, that's... I, you know, I was wondering how long he's been around. Um, I wasn't sure if it was uh, that long, but uh, wow, that's crazy. That's longer than Superman and Batman. There once was a friendly but naive king who wed a very nasty queen. The king was loved but the queen was feared. Then one day strolling through the woods an arrow pierced the kind king's heart. He lost his life and his lady love. That is the song, by the way. That was the one I was trying to remember yesterday uh, from this game. So, uh, yeah, there's a, definitely a doll thing going on here. Collector of Dolls is Alexia Ashford. Uh, that's the song that they're playing, that the music, little music box keeps playing. Da -da -da. Yeah, it's like all that is the song I just sang. And the only reason I know all the lyrics is because I have the soundtrack to Resident Evil 1, both versions. Resident Evil 2, uh, both versions. Resident Evil 3. Three, I think just the Japanese version, and Code Veronica, both versions. I don't know if they ever... No, they made a, a, an American Resident Evil 3. I have that one, too. I do. So I do have... So those are the, the eight Resident Evil CDs I own, and then there is one Resident Evil CD that's like a remix. I own that, too. It's a Code Veronica remix album. We meet each other at last. A pity I must say goodbye so soon. 
I am Alexia Ashford. For the pride of the Ashford family, I will kill you. So she's holding uh, Alfred's rifle, which is kind of a s subtle hint. What's going on? All those bullets he managed to hit her once. After her. Um. So in the book, what I like is that um, when Alexia comes in the room, Claire gives her a, a weird look. Like she's not sh she's shocked to see her because someone just springs in the room on her and is through a trap door and is aiming a gun at her. But when she looks at Alexia's face, she kind of pauses. And there's a reason for that, which we're going to find out here. Again, I don't want to spoil if uh, you haven't seen, but here we go. Look at this. This must be... Wig. <laughs> Makeup. Very reminiscent of Psycho, of uh, Anthony Perkins, which which I think is why I like this these villains, the Ashford twins. What just happened? So there never <laughs> What's up, Joe? After work? After all. You must Maybe be a stormtrooper. Who are you calling stormtrooper? Okay, dude, thank it. you for the subscription, man. 11 so months? Holy hell, dude. Thank you, free. Joe. He's trying to blow us up along with the entire facility. What the frack? <laughs> Come on. We gotta get to that airport. Oh, right. she must be a stormtrooper. Oh. With that aim, you mean? That aim be terrible, yo. So yeah, so uh, Alfred has been dressing up as his sister Alexia, uh, which is why no one on the island, because there's some of the files we pick up, mention like, oh, I've never seen Alexia face to face since she was a child, uh, but I see her in her silhouette in the window up at the house on the, on the hill, which is very psycho, you know, reminiscent of psycho. So, um, but yeah, Code Veronica, what I was saying is like, it follows the trilogy rules perfectly. It's like... It's like usually in a, if you're doing a trilogy, you bring back a villain from the first one or is somehow connected to the first one. They did this in um, pretty much almost every franchise that got a part three in the 80s and 90s. Uh, the biggest one being like Die Hard, I guess, for me, uh, that was the one I remember the most. Uh, Die Hard 3 had a villain in it that tied into the villain of the first movie. Um, and it's usually what you do, you bring back themes from the first ones. The theme in this one that was kind of different than Resident Evil 1 and 2, although it's there subtly, but it's the theme of family. So the good guys, it's Chris and Claire, brother and sister. Um, then you also have Steve, and then you find out his tragic past with his father. Um, tried to sell out Umbrella and got them captured and brought to the island, got his mom killed. Uh, so again, family. Uh, the Alfred fam our Ashford family, Alfred and Alexia. So, uh, I, I just, I think this game out of, from a story standpoint, it's structured far better than Resident Evil's 1, 2, and 3. Although, 2 has a, um, a great family theme in it with the Birkin family. Oh yeah, lockpick. I'm gonna take every weapon I can get. I'm done being selfish with my music. Unmuted. <laughs> okay, sweet. Welcome back, dude. Wait, what did I pick up? Oh. I thought we had to, like, set the water or something. Maybe that's something Chris has to do. Man, I think that even... That was two years ago, Seek. Amazing time. Oh, dude, I know. I recently, the other day, um, I watched our my vlog of that, where I you know met you guys, and I, I videotaped that whole trip, and I posted it on YouTube, but I uh, there was a couple clips that I that didn't make the cut, but I saved all that raw footage, and I watched some of it the other day. It was definitely good times. What the F? <laughs> no! Bad Joe after work! Bad! <laughs> Dude, it's bad I have my Switch and shouldn't be focusing on the... <laughs> uh, yeah, Joe's 
Oh, Joe, are you going to get... I don't know why you would, but Resident Evil 7, I think, didn't they just release that for the Switch? Add me! Oh, he says Adam. Oh, sweet, there you go. Making friends in the chat. Send him that, v that, send him that friend code, Joe. Alright. I read the art on comic. I missed that so much. Yeah, it's uh, it's in the Ari comic for um, the magazines when Wildstorm had it. They did those five oversized magazines. Um, Jim Lee, I think, did the covers to issue one and three. Which, by the way, I got Jim Lee to sign my covers, which is dope. I brought him to him. He goes, "Holy shit!" He's like, "I've never actually signed one of these before." I was like, "Really?" He goes, "Yeah." He's like, "Where'd you find this?" I'm like, "Dude, I bought this in like 1999." <laughs> like I've been holding on this for for almost two decades. You just hit a gold mine. Didn't even think of that because I didn't remember that Ken was the medic. Yeah, yeah, nobody does. He's the field medic of that team, um, of the Bravo team. So yeah, that would have been genius. You'd so have him, and so when Rebecca's like, "All right, we're you know, I'm gonna go this way," then you go, "Okay, we'll put Kenneth with her," and then they end up on the train, and then you tell the story, and then you learn the backstory of Kenneth Sullivan, uh, not Billy Cohen. <laughs> Not some Mary Sue that they just give all the all the like manly shit to. It's like whatever, dude. Every time that guy talks, I roll my eyes. Craig Gazam, a script for an RE game. Wow, you know your stuff. Those signatures. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I, well, yeah, I, I I'm a I'm just I'm just a big nerd man. I don't know everything. I definitely get my facts wrong sometimes, but I love me some Resident Evil, man. Uh, and yeah, I have a Resident Evil script too, actually. I, I wrote one. Um, Five minutes. And uh, I am writing one right now, actually, that I'm going to submit. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors that uh, Sony is looking for ideas for a Resident Evil TV show um, for Netflix, possibly, uh, and do like eight episode seasons, like Stranger Things. And I think that's a way better idea than. Um, doing another movie reboot because then you could really spend time with the characters and the city of raccoon city you can learn more about the city which i think has a great history to it billy shouldn't exist in re lore he really doesn't exist not to me he doesn't that's why he's never got brought back <laughs> yeah my all right, if you're watching later on YouTube, we are back. Uh, we made it back to the, the Tyrant, finally. Uh, so thank you for bearing with me. And we're in the middle, Unseen and I are in the middle talking about Res Evil scripts that we have written. And the one I'm working on now, its codename is Domicile. And it's a, it's literally a, sh it's, it's a pilot for the, for a, an eight episode season of Res Evil for Netflix. And um, the pilot is about George Trevor. Being, it, so it takes place in um, the 80s. I, I fudged the dates because obviously we can't set like Resident Evil 1 storyline in 1998 anymore. I mean, I guess we could, but I decided to update it to like 2018. Um, um, so I, what I did was I fudged with the timeline a little bit. And I had... Uh, so the first episode's about George Trevor getting invited to the mansion. Um, and then his family, you know, getting his like his wife getting injected, and his daughter Lisa getting injected. Oh shit! He's not down. I mean, he's down, but there we go. Suck at Trebek. Let's get that heal. Let's get that heal on. All right, we did it. Second time's a charm. Domicile. Please don't mention them. You can say whatever you want, but I hate them. <laughs> nice. Uh, the script I was working on was years ago for... Uh, his name is Marcus, the black police officer. Oh, Marvin. Marvin Branow, I think? Uh, yeah, I like that police officer from Resident Evil 2. Like a pre-op break? Yeah, so basically what I wanted was... It, I wanted the first episode to, like, show the foundation of Umbrella. So it, like, it starts off in, like, the 70s. 
the late 70s, and it has Alf, uh, Alexander Ashford, Dr. Marcus, and Oswald e. Spencer in Africa finding the plant that they used to create the progenitor virus from. And that's like the opening scene. And then it goes into the opening credits. And then from there, um, it cuts to like the 80s, like 10 years later. And Marcus is, or, uh, um, Spencer's house has been built in Raccoon City. And George Trevor's showing up to like have dinner there. So the first episode is completely about George Trevor being stuck in the mansion uh, with his own traps. And what happens is uh, you find out that the T-virus has other applications. So like, and they're experimenting it, you know, to do different stuff with it. So um, type A virus is injected into his daughter, Lisa. Type B is inj injected in his wife, uh, Jessica, which is straight from the video game, the remake. Um, but then Lisa turns into like the first creature and his wife turns into the first zombie. And then he's stuck trying to solve puzzles. Um, but, uh, but the puzzles he designed for the mansion, you find out his wife actually helped him design most of them. So that's kind of like the twist is that uh, Spencer didn't know that. And so S Trevor, he was injected with something and it's making him lose his memories the further and further he gets into the mansion. And he's trying to find his family, he's trying to find his family, and then finally at the end when he gets a chance to find his wife and daughter, he doesn't recognize them and he, and he, uh, and he sees that they've been bit and he doesn't want to get infected and he tra traps him in a room and he, and he ends up you know, being the cause of his wife dying and turning into a zombie. So it's like this really tragic end. Um, and then, you know, essentially Umbrella is born. Um, and then the second episode would be like modern day, it would be like 20 years later. And then it would introduce like, you know, Chris and Jill and, you know, this, all that stuff. And then you would tell their story for the rest of the first season. Marvin, yes, Marvin. Not Marvin Gaye, that's a, that's a singer. <laughs> You're working on something for Nightbot. It's a zombie game. Sweet. D&D &D style. Nice. We What's it called? Because it uh, digs into the roots, like the literal roots. Yeah, it's like I, that's what I was going for, was the roots of Resident Evil. What makes it... What's the essence of Resident Evil? Claire, I'm sorry. I know I caused... Zoom in trouble. on the petal center of the flower, CGI, no, it's okay. through the stem, and it's follow the roots the through the soil. I love what you're saying, man. Oh, this is dope. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Brother. I, I know he was a singer. Oh, yeah. What's that? I, I love... There's a Marvin Gaye song I love. I think it's called Inner City Blues. Rockets. Moonshot. Spend it all on the have-nots. Money. We make it. By the time we see it, you take it. Echo with the blanket, dude. We're having this... Human moment here with these two great characters that everybody loves, minus Steve. And you're ruining it. Sorry, my dog's barking. Tales of the Undead. Ooh, cool name. Alright, let's watch some of these cutscenes here. This will end out our episode um, after these cutscenes. But if you're here live, don't go anywhere. We're going to come right back with another episode. There's a lot of cutscenes here, I think, if I remember correctly. He did a cover of Mr. Sandman. It's great. <laughs> Who Marvin Gaye did? Sweet. I don't know if I heard that version. This game is not over yet. Now you will see what real terror is <laughs> all about. So yeah, like I said, in the games, in that scene where Alexia sneaks up on Claire, and Claire turns and looks at her, and she looks at her face, and she notices. She's like, what is going on? And it's because in the novel she could tell right away that it was uh, it was um, Alfred dressed in drag. Um, but I actually like, as far as villains go, I like they pay a lot of attention to the Asher family in this, which is key because I think that helps sell the story of Umbrella, and it makes you feel like you learn something about Umbrella through the actions of these two children of this rich family that helped fund it. And I love the twists coming up at the Antarctic base. Like they have some, they have some cool reveals. Yeah, Ink Ribbon, you know, I want to save. I want to talk to Samson. Fly to the moon. I'm so high. Echo, dude. Oh. 
Love the asteroids. Yeah, me too. They're good villains. They work. Hey, snap it, Bubba. We got enough. We got enough health here. But do we have enough bullets? What's that do? I don't remember the B.O.W. gas. Right, we'll find out. This open window can lead somewhere or nowhere. It's up to you. What do you mean, who is this? It's Chris. Why won't you believe me?